Hello students, welcome to EPG Patshala. I am Dr. Ashish Sahajpal, Assistant Professor from University Business School, Punjab University Regional Center, Ludhiana, Punjab. Today we are going to discuss about a module, Models of Strategic Implementation under paper Strategic Management. After completing this module, the students will be able to understand First, the concept of strategic implementation, interrelationship between strategic formulation and implementation, the importance of organizational structure in strategy implementation, and lastly, the McKenzie 7S framework. Strategic implementation is critical to a firm's success. Simply formulating a strategy does not suffice the purpose of the corporation. The strategy has to be effectively implemented so as to be acknowledged as a good strategy. There has to be a translation of strategic thought into strategic action. Though strategic formulation is the proposed action to meet the intent of the organization, the implementation, on the other hand, stresses on who, when, where and how of achieving the desired organizational goals and objective. In order to have a competitive edge over its competitor, the organization with a superior strategy needs to have a superior ability to execute a strategy. Therefore, to make a formulated strategy operational, an organization must have a control system that will well monitor and regulate the deviation from the proposed future path. As a result, the strategists have to overcome barriers that impede the, sp the smooth implementation of the strategy, such as change in the circumstances, the mismatch between the culture and values, that of organization and individuals, resistance to build a common system acceptable to the organization as a whole. Hence, it becomes imperative to address these needs by adopting models that relates to human resource and organizational fit for successful strategy as an outcome. Interrelationship between strategy formulation and implementation. It is however important to note that in real life strategy formulation and strategy implementation processes are interwinked. Therefore, the relationship between the two would be best understood by their interdependence. Although as a discipline, two are viewed as different phases of strategic management process purely because of the sequential and skill needs. However, strategy formulation phases involve largely conceptual and analytical activities and is a top management function whereas strategy implementation is more to do with administration and involves middle and lower management further there exist two types of languages between these two phases of strategic management that are forward linkages and backward linkages the forward linkages deal with the impact of strategy formulation on the implementation whereas backward linkages relates to the relationship in the opposite direction the forward linkage means that with the formulation of new strategies or reformulation leading to modified strategy many organizational processes and structures have to undergo change as per the requirement of new or modified formulated strategy Therefore, the formulated strategies provide the direction for the implementation of the strategy. On the other hand, the formulation process of strategy is also affected by the factors related to implementation. The organizations tend to consider those strategies which can be implemented with the help of present structure and resources. Such incremental changes underway over a period of time in turn assist the organization to move up from its present position to the desired state. Models of strategic implementation. 
Implementation of a strategy involves identification of the organizational structure and processes so that the necessary tasks are assigned and the performances are well evaluated, monitored, controlled and regulated to achieve the ultimate organizational objectives. Depending upon the priority given to the strategy, the processes are closely watched and revamped for the successful implementation of the strategy. Strategic fit is one of the important factors that express the degree to which an organization aligns the business strategy with its values, resources, and structure to positively impact performance. A good strategic fit indicates how a strategy needs to be fitted with its external environment and how the internal organization needs to be properly meshed with the strategy. The casual dynamic of a good fit can be outlined as follow. The first step involved identifying the organization management process and the fundamental structure that could support the formulated strategy. Secondly, to transfer the organizational complex demands into simplified ideologies and processes so that they are easily perceived by all the stakeholders. This simplicity involves into a holistic understanding that helps to reinforce the fit and minimizes the need for extensive coordination among different divisions of the organization. Therefore, an outstanding performance can be sustained by emphasizing the basic fit among the formulated strategy, structure, and process. Exhibit 1 highlights the evolution of management processes at Tata Ceramics Limited with Titan's intervention in the business to turn around the profitability of TCL. Exhibit 1, Titan does wonders for Titan Ceramics. Titan Ceramics Limited TCL was incorporated in 1991 as an associate of Tata Power. Being an export-oriented unit, nearly 90% of its turnover came from European markets, Australia and New Zealand. Tata Ceramic Limited manufactured Bon China tableware for some of the world's best brands such as Wedgwood, Royal Dalton and Churchill. Despite that the company was meeting all stringent international quality standards, it was unable to scale up the size of its business. Its plants at Kochi, Kerala, having a production capacity of 10 million pieces a year, was underutilized, leading to losses for the company. The main reason attributed to the falling sales was the declining consumer preference towards Boing China crockery and export markets. It was in 2013 that Bhaskar Bhatt, the MD of Tata's group Titan Company Limited, was appointed chairman of TCL and was bestowed with the task of reviving the company. He was the man behind the scene who oversaw Titan's diversification from a watchmaker to a jewelry and eyewear retailer. He was once again entrusted to bring in a similar transformation in TCL. The strategy adopted by Bhatt was to shift the focus to the domestic market for which Researches were undertaken to explore the potential. Analyzing the tableware market in India to be unorganized, the thrust was to know that how to make the local market organized and grow. Moreover, there lied an opportunity that many Indian middle class households were moving from steel tumblers to crockery, and TCL had a competency in manufacturing world-class born China tableware. Henceforth, the thrust was to continue the growth in exports along with establishing its presence in the domestic market. Titan's mandate was to turn around the profitability for Tata Ceramics Limited, where Titan operated at an arm's length. 
in an attempt to align the business strategy with its resources, capabilities, and structure to impact the performance positively, the company established the long and short term objective of this turnaround. In the short run, the focus was laid on optimizing the year on year cash flow by streamlining the production range and to launch a new array of product based on consumers' need and preferences, which hold an immense potential. Further, measures were taken for improving processes at manufacturing backend strengthening the existing areca that is hotels restaurant and cafes and distributors account through well planned replenishment improved service standards and identifying new high worth segments for the existing range of products for instance corporate gifting on the other hand in the long run keeping in mind the tata expertise in new market entry there lays ahead a very strong pitch that india ceramics may launch a retail brand for the domestic market under the aegis of titan the sevenus framework the sevenus model was developed in 1980s by mckenzie consultant tom peter and robert h waterman the purpose of this model is to analyze how well an organization is positioned to achieve its intended objectives the framework helps to identify the elements in the organization that need to be aligned to improve performance it is important to note that implementing a strategy is not only a matter of structure although it remains one of the key element therefore the seven s model highlights the seven different internal aspects of an organization that needs to be aligned together to achieve effectiveness in an organization these are strategy structure system skills staff style and shared values these seven elements of organization are divided into soft and hard areas strategy system and structures are defined as the hard element as it is much easier to identify and manage them when compared with the other elements such as style staff skills and shared values which are termed as soft s the seven s model is graphically depicted in figure 1 this graphical representation of the model depicts that there exist multiple internal factors that need to be aligned to improve the organization performance secondly all the factors are interconnected and it is perhaps not only difficult but impossible to make significant progress in one area without making any in the others the seven s model is a valuable tool that helps the company to frame the organizational design in times of uncertainty however the most common uses of the models are first to determine how best to implement a new strategy second is to facilitate organizational change and third to improve the performance of the company let us now try to understand the 7s one on one in detail for better understanding of the framework strategy strategy may be defined as the action undertaken by a company in response to the changes in its external environment it is a way by which the company position itself vis-a-vis its competitor in the industry to achieve competitive advantage one of the prerequisite for successful implementation of the strategy is that the strategy has to be simplified for it to be easily perceived and communicated to the entire stakeholders alfred chandler was the first to point out that structure follow strategy definitely a better understanding of a strategy helps to rationally align the organizational structure design but the statement structure follow strategy may not stand valid in isolation neither a good formulated strategy nor a well structured organization is self sustained for successful execution of a strategy there lies many more dimension that helps in successful implementation of the strategy students now we'll be focusing on the next s 
of McKenzie's 7S model, that is the structure. The structure is defined as the organizational chart of the firm that represents the way portfolio of business divisions and units are organized. The very basic purpose of a structure is to divide the task activities and then to provide coordination between them. Organizational structure is a trade-off between specification and integration. By way of structure, a company takes stock of its internal competences and capitalizes it to achieve organizational objectives. No doubt, as the complexity and the size of business increases with time, the dimensions along which the companies want to divide its tasks also changes. The various possibilities for division before a company may be based on functions, products, divisions, on geographical location, strategic business units, and probably more. Structure is one of the most visible and easy to change element of the framework. If a company wants to bring in a change without disrupting the structure of the organization, then system is one of those elements. Systems are the processes and procedures, both formal and informal, that makes an organization accomplish its day-to-day -day business activities. Cost accounting procedures, training systems, budgeting systems, management information systems are the example of systems within an organization. For successful strategic implementation, a company must have its system in place. For example, if a bank wants to decrease the waiting time for its customer while availing retail banking services at the branch, the bank needs to focus on its systems and subsystems that could enhance the bank's effectiveness. Skills. We generally tend to characterize the companies by what they do best. Skills refer to attributes or the capabilities that the companies need to acquire in order to reinforce its new strategies. Corporations like 3M, that is known as the global innovation company, had differentiated its product in the marketplace and created high entry barriers through its high level of innovation. The people at 3M captures the spark of new ideas and transform them into thousands of ingenious products and practical application that help make people lives better. Skills are thans, the tisset capabilities that are difficult or impossible for the rivals to imitate and enable the company to achieve competitive advantage over them. Stuff. The staff element relates to the type and the number of personnel within the organization, how they will be recruited, trained, motivated, and rewarded. In today's knowledge-based economies, it is the people who make the real difference. For the successful implementation of strategy, the organization has to assume that it has the right people to undertake the appropriate job. For example, it was in 2013, that Bhaskar Bhatt, the MD of Tata Group, Titan Group Limited, was appointed chairman of Tata Ceramics Limited and was bestowed with the task of reviving the company. He was the man behind the scene who oversaw Titan's diversification from a watchmaker to a jewelry and eyewear retailer and was once again entrusted to bring in a similar transformation in TCL. So now we'll be talking about the next is of the 7S model, that is style. Style refers to the leadership approach of the top management in the organization. How do the leaders interface with the subordinates and others in the organization? And how do members interact with each other? Every organization has its own distinct culture and management style that largely includes the values, the beliefs, the norms, etc., which becomes the enduring part of organizational life. For example, the South Asia head of journal electric, Banbali Agarwala, 
laid emphasized on the new culture emergent in the organization that was driven by Jeff Emilet, GE, global CEO. It demanded its people to cut through the maze of politeness and to deliver their messages directly for enhanced performance. The intent of such a culture was that the people should not waste their time on being nice and polite to each other just because they want to avoid confrontation and don't want to displease anyone. The belief behind promoting such a culture hence was to promote constructive criticism that in turn would help the organization and its employee to come up with the new and better ideas. Hence, the leadership style of the top management have an important role in bringing the required changes in the organization and thus helping in easy adoption of new strategies. Now we'll be talking about the last S of the model that is the shared values. Shared values are the fundamental ideas or the guiding concepts around which the business is built. These are sets of belief often unwritten that goes beyond the conventional formal statement of organizational objectives. These values and common goals bind the employees together a common destination as a cohesive team. On the contrary, the organizations with weak values and common goals often tends to exhibit difference between employees personal and organizational goals where employees are found following their individual goals different from that of the organization for example the aspiration to lead with purpose remain the area of focus for johnson and johnson that derives the company to create innovation that significantly impact human health and well-being in the same way the 3m's slogan science applied to life inspire people to apply science and innovation to make a real impact in every person's in every person's life around the world these shared values may carry a very little meaning for the outsiders who are not well conversant with the organization but for the insiders these values hold higher level of significance therefore it is to be noted that the solution to the problem of implementing the strategy is not only sufficed by bringing a change in the organizational structure but the reason lies among the other variables as highlighted by 7s framework okay friends now we'll try to summarize the total module strategy implementation remains one of the crucial step in the process of strategic management process which involves the intent analysis the business environment analysis the choice of strategies available the implementation implementation refer to as a process through which strategies are put into action by programs budgets and procedures for a strategy to be successful the strategic thought need to be translated into strategic action a well-framed strategy is a halfway to success till it is properly implemented however in real life strategy formulation and strategic implementation process are intervened the strategy formulation phase involves largely conceptual and analytical activities and is a top management function whereas strategic implementation is more to do with administration and involves middle and lower management the implementation of strategy involves identification of organizational structure and processes and to align them with the proposed strategic intent for which the necessary tasks are assigned and their 
performances are evaluated, monitored, controlled, and regulated to achieve the ultimate organizational objectives. The traditional processes evoke only aligning the organizational structure for successful implementation of strategy, whereas the 7S framework highlighted that implementing a strategy is not only a matter of structure, although it remains one of the key elements. The framework describes various internal aspects of an organization that need to be aligned together to achieve effectiveness in an organization that is the strategy, structures, system, skills, staff, style, and shared values. These seven elements of organization are further divided into soft and hard areas. Strategy, system, and structure are defined as the hard elements as it is much easier to identify and manage them when compared with the other elements such as style, staff, skills, and shared values, which are termed as soft S. The softer component of the models are the most challenging elements as they are difficult to change. However, if soft S are altered, they can have a great impact on the hard S, that is structure, strategies, and the systems of the organization. Thank you.